Hi there, welcome to this overview of Dot .memory, the JetBrains memory profiler. Dot .memory helps us optimize memory usage in our application, find memory leaks and fight other types of memory issues. Let's dive in. There are a couple of ways to launch Dot .memory. We can attach the profiler to an already running process or start a new process. Dot .memory can profile standalone applications, Windows Store and Universal Windows Platform apps, Silverlight, web applications, Windows services and so on. It supports applications written in any .NET framework version, starting with .NET 2.0 up to the latest and greatest. We can also profile projects from Visual Studio, using the ReSharper profile menu. Let's profile our startup application. We can go with the defaults, or open the advanced settings so we can provide additional startup parameters and decide on the detail of data that will be captured during profiling. We can also make use of the profiler API and tell dot memory to start profiling at a specific point in our application simply by making a call from our code. Now let's launch our application, a version of Conway's Game of Life. While the application is running, we can see memory allocation of our application in real time. On the right, we can see some statistics such as the amount of memory being used, we can see how much memory is on every heap generation as well. The timeline displays how memory usage evolves while running the application. Now let's capture a snapshot which we can then analyze further. Dot memory aims to be both friendly and powerful. Information that was captured should not be overwhelming when first opening a snapshot, but it should be possible to drill down to as much detail as desired. The Snapshot Overview page shows us our memory snapshot at a glance. We can see some friendly diagrams, such as the object sets taking most memory and the key objects that hold other objects in memory. That memory also comes with a number of automatic inspections, of which we can see the results here as well. String duplicates shows us strings with the same value. If we're allocating arrays but are only using a fraction of the assigned memory, we will see those listed under sparse arrays. If we have an event handler which is not being cleaned up, we can see those here as well. There are also several automatic inspections for WPF and Silverlight. We can investigate a snapshot as if we are police detectives. We start with a large list of suspects and narrow it down based on clues we can find. The left side navigation bar shows us where we are in our investigation and allows us to go back and forth when we want to. Every time we dive into an object set, we can see the number of objects that are created, as well as their memory usage. We can group objects by namespace, assembly or interface. Other views are available as well. There's the call tree as icicle chart, which gives us a visual overview of the stack trace responsible for creating the object set. In our application, when we click the advertisement, it should be closed and removed from memory. But is it? Only one way to find out. Let's capture another snapshot. In both snapshots, we have information about the objects in memory at that time, so we can compare them both and see if the ad window is actually gone from memory. We can see the difference between the first snapshot, where the advertisement was visible, and the second one, where the advertisement window was closed. We can see the number of objects that survived between snapshots, as well as the number of new and dead objects. If we search for our ad window, we can see it survived between snapshots, even though we expected it to be destroyed. Now let's go back and drill into our second snapshot and see if we can find out why the ad window is kept in memory. We can see that the automatic inspections found an event handler leak for our ad window. When drilling down, the key retention paths view shows us where the ad window is held in memory. Apparently we have a dispatcher timer running and an event handler is keeping our ad window from being collected. The call tree shows us where we are subscribing to this event handler. Now let's jump back to Visual Studio and look at our code. We can see we are subscribing to the event handler, but we forgot to unsubscribe from the event handler when closing the window. So let's fix that. Dot memory also comes with memory traffic analysis. It shows us the number of allocated and collected bytes. High traffic means that garbage collection will happen more often, potentially having a performance impact on our application. Dot memory also comes with support for remote profiling. We can do a memory analysis on our server, for example for a web application, by running a small executable on the server and then connecting to it from dot memory. Don't just use dot memory in case of an emergency or when you already have memory issues. 
It's always a good idea to make memory profiling part of your development workflow, so you can learn how an application behaves before putting it into production. Give that memory a try and analyze your applications today. More information is available on our website. Till next time!